You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Ready for Love After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Ready for Love After Show. Ooh, we're back to the song. I know. <laughs> Different every week. We change it up, right? Hey, everyone. Bing is for doing, and we are doing our seventh after show for Ready for Love, Ready to Meet His Parents. I'm your host, Samantha Leach. I'm joined tonight by Tara and Giselle, and we also have a very special guest in the studio tonight. Miss Shandy from Ernesto's house is with us Yay! tonight. Thank you guys for Welcome. having me. I'm excited. <laughs> and I have to say, I'm kind of fangirling tonight because Shandy, I emailed you a while back, mm-hmm. and she's actually the person who inspired me to do pageants back in the day. So Aww. I've been following Shandy's career for about 10 years now. Oh, Huge sweet. fans. We're so excited to have you. Well, thank you. I'm, it's my pleasure to be here. Look awesome. at this. Yeah. We've got a little love fest I going know. on. We're so ready for love. <laughs> and as always, I'm live tweeting at Giselle Ugarty, G-I-S-E-L-L-E-U-G-A-R-T. Boom. Boom. I'm gonna not live tweet because unfortunately <laughs> I, I can't multitask in that yeah. sense. I'm not that good, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's jump right into um, this week's episode. So we have plenty of time to talk to Shandy and, and pick your brain about your experience. Um, we'll start off with Ben, who is left with Taryn from Amber's team, Allie from Matt's team, and Tracy's left with two ladies, or was left with two ladies, Angela and Renee. Um, And they got to meet Ben's parents and sister and brother, actually. They got the entire family, um, Soraya and Joseph, his parents, his brother Matt, and his sister Joelle, who I think Joelle, she was was a character. She was my favorite, I have to say, because she just said it how it is. She was like, look, I'm going to look out for you. And if she didn't feel it, she let him know. And I love it. I'm the same way. And I have two older brothers. If you're going to take my last name and I don't get to keep mine, then yeah. I'm, I'm going to be a little picky. I have a, I have a, I don't get to keep that's, a, I have a brother. I've never thought of it like that. I've never liked any of his girlfriends. Maybe that's the reason why. Too funny. You're taking my name. You're taking my name. Taking my name. What a handsome family, though, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Like true. his sister is beautiful, mm-hmm. his brother is handsome. I know. Um, yeah. His dad, not as much. But <laughs> <laughs> Maybe back in the day. I could see his dad being really handsome back in the day, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong with that family. The, the no. genes are going to be excellent, especially yeah. with the ladies that he's left over with, too. So <laughs> True. if they end up together, they're headed down the right direction. Um, Angela was the first lady to meet, um, meet his parents, and she actually... I was kind of on the line whether or not she was going to talk about the thing that she's talked about the entire season. And she did, but not in the way that I was expecting. She was a little bit more standoffish about telling her, his parents that she's still a virgin because it came up talking about her faith and stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and she said, you know, that's a gift that I'm saving for my husband, which I think she put it so much better than saying like, oh yeah, I haven't had sex yet, I'm a virgin. You right. know, because that's not the point that she was trying to get across. And that's not the reason why she still is. It's so, something so much bigger to her. And I think that his parents really respected that. I, res- I mean, I totally respect her decision to wait until she gets married. I'm totally on board with that. Rah, rah to Angela. But this girl just does not seem fun at all to me. I'm just waiting for mm-hmm. something besides that to come out about her personality. Mm-hmm. That's what she talks about all the time, which is great. Sets her apart from a lot of different women. Right. But there's, I, she's not fun to me. I'm waiting for her to crack a joke or... Something. I really liked how before she went to reveal that, she actually looked at Ben almost like for kind of, I don't want to say approval, but kind of, you could tell she was getting ready to tell them yeah. there's mm-hmm. a big choice that she's made in her life, and she kind of looked at him like, to make it okay, I guess, because right. I guess mm-hmm. to, to blurt something like that out to someone's family isn't, you know, necessarily... I agree. 
necessary at all. <laughs> but he did kind but of I give her like the reciprocation they, I think that she was looking for. I, I don't remember if it was like grabbing her hand or if yeah. it was like kind of a I nudge. Think, like, I think like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Tell her. yeah. And I think he probably, and I don't know, I'm now I'm getting inside of his head, but he probably wanted or allowed her or encouraged her to mm -hmm. speak on that because it is something that um, not everyone does. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of impressive if someone has made that choice, maybe. Yeah, so. that's exactly how his mom took it too, which mm -hmm. I thought was awesome. We didn't understand unfortunately get to see much more of their interactions together. I'm surprised she stuck around this long. You, really? Yeah. Oh, I like I her. I mean, I was never a fan of her to begin with. Right, that's so. true. That's true. <laughs> I was I was I've just been surprised that she's still here. I like her. I think that everything that she has, if you were to put it in an equation, I think she has everything going for her for yes. Ben. I just haven't seen it all come together because of the lack of I guess excitement to yeah, be there, yeah. you know, just their fun energy. And she, she talks about all the qualities that she has. We have yet to see them. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's the only that X missing piece that we haven't really gotten to fully kind of embrace her. And we're right. still a little like, yeah, you're perfect. It's just how Ben said, but are you perfect for him? Because we don't really have a good sense of your personality yet. He just seems so passionate and sensual, and those just seem like qualities that she does not have. Right, Whatever she, yeah. when she even says, I'm fun, she says it with a stoic face. <laughs> yeah. I'm fun. I'm, I'm fun. like, I believe you. I like you. to have a good time. Yeah, I believe but, you. <laughs> Maybe she needs some booze, and then we'll believe her. <laughs> um, does she? But she has, does she drink, or is it just I don't like know. I don't know? I don't know. I'm she was fine. Sure. By this episode, we're all living in a house together. Right. Um, our houses have all merged, and yeah, she she would have a drink. Okay. Maybe not as much as some of the other girls. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, she would have an occasional drink. Okay. So. Is she fun? Let me ask that question. Because you is she? Does she exhibit some? Yeah, she does. But it's also um, I think maybe partially it's editing and partially it's um, you know just the stressful environment. I think is probably nerve wracking anytime meeting anyone's parents mm -hmm, and then yeah. uh, to have like cameras everywhere and producers and everyone like eavesdropping in. Um, which, I mean, that's one thing, meeting the parents. Now, now try to like kiss a guy and all that's happening. Right, it's true, like, too. True. Or <laughs> hang out with a guy for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> While everyone else is doing the same with Mr. Ben. Right. <laughs> that we pointed out to him. But I love that by this time in the season that you, you guys are all one house now because you have such a sense of, of the girls that we're dealing with that we're yeah. not really getting to see because we've been talking about editing the entire season. So we don't really know everyone but we do but it's mm -hmm. kind of what the producers want us to know of them right. and stuff so totally you'll be our well, inside it was, source it was nice too when the houses merge because then you just because right now everyone's getting down in numbers and mm -hmm. so you don't really have every day i mean this is your only group to hang out with and to mm -hmm. talk to and do anything with and so now you it's almost like your family just grew now you have more faces to talk to and also we've been probably around for maybe a month, month and a half, something like that. And so you almost get a little stale seeing the same girls doing the same yeah, things. Yeah. And so it's good to have that fresh new faces all, all around. Yeah. Now you have two more things to talk about. Two yeah. more guys. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. We ladies love to talk about the men. <laughs> well, especially if the other three girls that you're living with, you're not really caring that much for them true. anymore. Yeah. You're at least finally I can talk to somebody else that, that I don't disguise or despise. That's but good, good point. <laughs> uh, Renee was the second lady to meet Ben's parents, and we've, I mean, the three of us, anyways, throughout the season, we haven't really connected well with her. We keep getting, you know, the buddy, let's go grab a beer kind of vibe. But Joelle really liked her. Mm -hmm. She just felt like a good energy from her and she connected with her. So maybe we're not really seeing what Ben really wants, but I mean, obviously we are because of the way that the segment ended, but it, it kind of threw me off. I wasn't expecting her to get along so well, but maybe it is because she got the buddy buddy thing too. You know, she was mm -hmm. like, I, was I can shocked. be friends with you. Yeah, but I was sh I was completely shocked that sh like the results happened the way they did after this episode mm -hmm. because I did all of a sudden finally be like, wait, I feel like they might actually be able to work together. And previously, I never thought Renee in a million years would get along with Ben yeah. or that I would see that connection with the two of them. And so it made me sad. I, was actually, yeah. I think yeah. it's probably because Renee uh, just had such a realness about her. She's incredibly intelligent, but. Mm -hmm. um, she really connects with everyone when she talks to them, and you really feel like she wants to talk to you, and she's she values that conversation. Um, and Lord knows, like in Hollywood, like you rarely get that from people. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she just she had a very genuineness and authenticity about her, mm -hmm. and I think that's what Joelle was probably picking up on. Yeah, that it just made her comfortable more than anything. I didn't. I still didn't like her with Ben. 
even after this, and mm -hmm. I did when she met his family, I was like, this is a different side of her we mm -hmm. haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Maybe a softer side, maybe a, you know, a buddy, not a buddy, let's go get a drink yeah, kind of side. Yeah, I saw her as more of a partner right. in right. the situation. I saw her more as, as a woman for the first time, really, like really kind of feminine and soft, and she talked about being a traditional mother and, and being at home with her family, which we really hadn't seen that side of her before, but mm -hmm. I still didn't see anything between <laughs> she and Ben, really, I didn't. I think that's the thing that was missing. It's just the chemistry on his end. Mm -hmm. She, You could see that she was feeling it and that she was really into him. But he, it was almost just so forced from him because he wanted her to feel reciprocated. Like, he didn't want her to just be doing all these things and then him to just be like, okay, cool. Like, thank you. <laughs> right. So he was kind of being affectionate back towards her. But I felt like it was almost kind of like a pity, I don't want to leave you out sort of thing. Because you, you could just tell that he wasn't really feeling it. He wasn't into it, you know? But he's a nice but. guy, and every guy likes to hang out, have some girls to hang out with and catch, you know, right. grab a beer and, you know, yeah. so that's fun. But isn't that so interesting, though? Because on paper, you would think that those two would be a perfect mm -hmm. match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, just her background and schooling and work, and you would think it'd be a perfect match. And it's so crazy, like, how chemistry can play, like, such a huge, important role. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We had talked about that, actually, in a previous, um, a previous episode, and we were saying, you know, just exactly how you said, Everything can line up by the book. This is exactly what I'm looking for. But if you don't have the chemistry, all of that stuff really doesn't, doesn't matter, matter yeah. because mm -hmm. that's such an important factor yeah. that you just have to have to connect with someone. Absolutely. But then on the flip side, it's like you can't just go off of chemistry because True. that works yeah. for maybe a few months, mm -hmm. a year, two mm -hmm. years, but you're looking 10 years into a marriage and you don't have anything similar to talk about. Yeah. Right? You're so, like, okay, fine well, line. Go from here. Yeah. Fine <laughs> line. That's what was so different about who we'll talk about in a minute, Allie. Mm -hmm. That it just seemed like the total opposite, where they have all the chemistry in the world and you can't figure out if she's on the same intellectual level or not. Yeah, that was the biggest thing that stood out. But before um, the parents met Allie, well, at least what we saw, uh, they got to meet Taryn, and Amber's advice for Taryn was to sell yourself to the family. She mentioned, you know, you have all this going for you. You are exactly what he's looking for. You just need to sell that to them. You need to prove that to them so that they know that you're a good fit. Because I think... Taryn, we've seen the connection good with her and Ben, but we haven't really seen her kind of stand by herself and be kind of like a standout character. Mm -hmm. You know, we've kind of seen her shine because of the connection and the chemistry that she has with Ben. And he even pointed out, you know, since the first week when it was her birthday and stuff, they just had this really good connection, you know. But um, Joelle, she, she said that she was really kind of uncomfortable around her. There was just something that the complete opposite of Renee. Yep. And we've we've kind of liked Taryn like this far along because we see more of the relationship side than the buddy buddy. But I mean, she just she couldn't really pinpoint it to. We were speaking about gut feelings mm -hmm. earlier when we were mm -hmm. watching the episode. And it's just something that you can't put your finger on. You know, it's just something that you just feel. Yeah, that Taryn didn't work. threw up some like really strong walls or something when she was talking to the family. And last week too, remember? Yeah, we were it was like, like a job interview. Was, yes, mm -hmm. it was. It was very stoic, very "I am woman," you know, "Hear me roar" or "Shaka Khan, I'm every woman" kind of thing. But it wasn't. <laughs> it, it wasn't really loving to Ben at all. It was just kind of like, "I'm this great, fantastic woman," and she was selling herself. But it was the hard sale. It was not like. Mm -hmm. The cell where you would talk to someone's mom and say, "Look, I, you know, like me because I'm great, but I also love your son." She's mm -hmm. she's been throwing this real strong personality. I think that's what Ben's sister said. I mean, her personality is so strong. I don't really, uh, I'm not really, I don't gravitate to women like that because that's right. such a strong personality. And she did. She came across really. It was almost a bit much. It was like mm -hmm. she's putting herself on a pedestal. Bring it down. I think a, a lot of bit. people, though, uh, will behave that way just out of the stress and the nerves oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and wanting to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, we almost strive to be good enough too far. And then mm -hmm. it can come across um, in a different way than we intended it to. What did you think of Taryn? Yeah. So I liked her in the house. She was really spunky, um, always laughing, always um, just a very vivacious, like, spunky, fun person. So I, I liked her in the house. And that was, did not come across at all when she met his family. The mm -hmm. spunky, vivacious. Well, that we saw. Yeah, that we saw. Right. Right, that we yeah. saw, to be fair. And do you think, because one of the biggest conflicts with 
Taryn and Allie, uh, this episode at least, was Allie kind of pointing out that Taryn's one of the rudest. I mean, they kind of rolled up their sleeves and, oh, and got yeah. into it when you guys were at the stage scene. So do you think that there was really any truth to what Allie was saying? Like, did you ever feel that Taryn really is as rude as, as well, Allie was trying to make so it? what's so interesting is that, um, so this episode, we all merge into one house mm -hmm. together. And so everyone doesn't know, like, the, own, the drama that's already building in each other's house. Mm -hmm. So they, I think, it had something going back and forth for weeks building up. And then we just come in and we have our own drama in our house and then we have to like look around and see everyone else um, so by that point I only knew these girls for um, just almost a week um, and what I knew of them Taryn was one that I liked a lot um, really? I thought she was yeah really fun and um, like I said spunky and just always like laughing and, and kind of like a sorority girl almost well and let's not forget how that drama started is they asked the women you know is there something that we should know right here. Mm -hmm. And then Renee chimed in, and then Taryn chimed in, and then... Yeah, I yeah. have to say, Renee showed several different sides in this episode, because when she called out Allie, I was like, oh, so she's a catty chick, too. Like, it was just <laughs> different than I'd ever, you know, heard her say before. And it was, she really did throw Allie under the bus. And I yeah. think everyone kind of played themselves, because Ben is the kind of guy as he walked down the stairs and instantly hugged Allie because he saw her being so upset. And so now all the attention's on the person that you were trying to throw under the bus. That's how you played yourself sometimes. Like, I mean, that's mm -hmm. how I took it. I was like, guys, Ben is this guy who's going to come down the stairs and try to rescue the damsel mm -hmm. in distress. You're making her the damsel in distress. He did just that. And everyone's like, well, he didn't hug me. Well... Yeah, she almost mm -hmm. became the Carrie Hot Topic it, girl totally. because even though it wasn't anything positive that they had to say about her just by talking about her, it took all the attention mm -hmm. off of them and directed it to her, and she got the attention that she, at the end of the day, wanted right. from Ben. So it kind of um, stabbed him in the back a little bit. Uh, but Allie, when she met the family, Joelle didn't really get the clear answers that she was hoping for. That was her biggest thing. Um, one thing that stood out is she was like, we just have so much in common. <laughs> and again, editing... We know that that and probably is going to do it. But. I, I, don't, I don't know, because I wasn't there, so I can't comment on the editing. But I did think that was funny, because she made it sound like there's a lot to choose from. And yeah. then when she was put on the spot of, well, what specifically? It was like, I don't really know. No. I love that yeah. Joelle did that, too. And she yeah, was like, was well, funny. what? As opposed to just kind of letting, I feel like when that's said, they're like, we just have so much in common. Like, oh, that's so cute. Everyone just always lets that slide. And she's yeah. like, well, what? Let me yeah. hear it listed yeah. out, and she's like, <laughs> she had nothing I don't to say. Know. She had nothing to say. Yeah. So I think that that kind of threw off. She was like, "Do you really even know that much about him, then? Because if you can't even figure out what compares to you and him, mm -hmm. are you really that good of a match, or you're just extremely attracted to my brother?" Right. I mean, that answer bothered me more than the CEO question that became the big question mm -hmm. of you know when they were like, "Well, you're not interested because if he's really in business and he wants to come home and talk about business, you should be able to." to him like she should read the Wall Street Journal and New York Times every day while he's at work and I was just like this seems like a big deal they're making a big deal out of nothing but if she can't identify what she finds that the two of them have in common that's a big issue to me yeah yeah mm -hmm. but the other stuff is yeah he's like I'm not looking for another business partner I right. have enough business partners totally. I'm looking for my partner Absolutely. I like I like that he said that, yeah. that was really like sweet mm -hmm. um, and in seeing the two twins together actually they are a hoot together um, <laughs> They are, uh, like, feed off of each other, almost like Cheech and Chong. Like, one will start talking, the other one finishes the sentence, Aww. and um, just so much energy. And then they have a sister who looks exactly like the two of them. So it's, like, almost really? like a triple oh, break wow. then. Younger, um, though, right? Blonde yes. yeah. And so um, But, yeah, seeing those two together is hilarious. That's and awesome. Mm -hmm. I like them. I mean, I, I think I was on the fence before about the twins when we first started, but now I like them. Well... Not for long. Well, I know. But I had to put it out there. I say when I don't like people, so let me at least say what I do. True. <laughs> this is true. I want to say what I do. Yeah, I've always been drawn to, I think I was telling you, just there's something very charismatic about them. Like, they're just so bubbly. They kind of make you want to, like, enjoy the situation, even if you're not connected with it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But we've been saying all along, I wonder if they can actually connect with the two guys that they're there for, mm -hmm. as opposed to just being, like, these great girls that love life and right. are always positive. Side um, note, how happy do you think Matthew was when Mandy got voted off? 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> I would be Because I've been saying over and over, I think he's in love with her. That's true. So I wouldn't have been shocked if they came up in the elevator together and he was like, and now it's me and Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> Voila. Mandy is just... <laughs> yeah. No, he, he definitely liked the twins a lot. And I think it's because they are so transparent. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell there's no real, like, hidden agenda. Like, mm -hmm. they just... They really are just these fun little bubbles of life. Yeah, that's nice. You don't get enough of that. It's very refreshing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially to say they're genuine, because, you know, normally people have some type of agenda. So to meet two mm -hmm. of them who are just that nice and genuine, okay, I like you guys. I think it's their Kentucky <laughs> roots. Yeah. I yeah. really think, like, Midwest and South, sometimes the roots go so deep that you really can't, um, yeah. yep. I don't know, can't lose that. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, did you want to clarify your greased pig comment? Yes. So, <laughs> okay, uh, the editing is just so funny because... I literally, I, yes, I lived the life of the show, but then uh, you watch the editing and you're like, oh, well, that was a little bit different. <laughs> but um, one day, because I never get to watch it on Tuesday nights, I'm usually too busy that evening. And so uh, I was getting tweets of people and they're like, you called Mandy a greased pig. And I'm like, I never called Mandy a greased pig. Like, what? <laughs> and so I went and I watched it and I was like, oh. So what had happened, what had happened was, uh, <laughs> we were on a plane uh, to go to the lake, uh, which, let me also clarify, it shows me, like, oh, Shani never got in the water. Shani was swimming like a mermaid. <laughs> um, when we had our one-on-one -on -one date, uh, we were on the back of the boat, had a very intimate moment where um, I was talking about, like, my decision of coming on the show. and. Uh, we had an incredibly passionate kiss, and then we got in the water together because I don't. I'm not just gonna jump into like a deep. I don't like deep bodies of water where I can't see my feet, and so we were kind of closer to the edge, and so we got in together, and then we're swimming around and and had an amazing makeout session there, which you don't get to see. So <laughs> my hair got wet. <laughs> but, just for um, the record, I'm sure your parents are grateful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but on the flight there, um, Mandy, just because she is so vivacious, she was like, "Oh my gosh, look outside! Oh my god, I'm on a plane! Oh, is that champagne?" Like she was just really filled with excitement and so I had made a statement in the uh, in the private interview the confession that um, it reminded me back in 2002 I was in Missouri and I was at this local fair and I wrestled a greased pig in a pit of mud for this competition it was this horribly <laughs> crazy experience but I said it reminded me of that because the second that you would get a hold of Mandy like the greased pig it would, she'd just like slip out of your hands again. So you, having a conversation with her, as soon as you thought you were having a conversation, she'd buzz over somewhere else and like, look outside, like, this is amazing, we're on a plane. And, <laughs> and so that was what my comment was, but then it was edited, and so I called her a greased pig, and I was like, no, like she, <laughs> yeah, she wears pink, but like that's about as close as we can get to it. So the editing is quite comical to watch because they're, they have so much footage mm -hmm. of three houses, three guys, three matchmakers, 36 girls, a scoreboard, and two hosts, yeah. all this stuff going on. So when they edit it down, unfortunately, you're only getting snippets of it. But watching it after having lived it is very interesting. So. <laughs> yeah, this show has so much content that it could just go for an entire year, mm -hmm. and we could live oh, yeah. the, the two-month experience yeah. with you guys <laughs> from, like, January all the way through the rest of the year. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> and get enough stuff. Um, but, okay, so Allie, and she actually volunteered herself to go into the bottom two, which is the first time we've seen this because she felt like she needed to defend herself. She needed to go down, and if she even said, you know, if Ben doesn't want me here, then he'll send me home. That's what needs to happen. So she went down with Renee, but um, Ben didn't send Renee home. It was just buddy-buddy, but yeah. I'll catch you after the show. We're not ending yeah. up together. Until it makes it through another week. Cool. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh if he ends up with her. I'm totally gonna laugh if he ends up with her. <laughs> no I mean, he and Angela, I mean, he and Renee caught a Heineken after. It's no big deal. They will still hang out. Yeah. There's no Ben's not gonna pick Angela. That's so funny. Okay. No well, let's move on to Tim, and then we will get to Ernesto, because that's what we really want to talk about tonight. Ernie. Um, Tim is left with. Actually, Amber, I mean, sorry, Matt is completely out of girls for Tim's group. Amber has Haley, Sarah, and Seaham, and Tracy was left with Jenna. She was freestanding. Matt, he still found his way to kind of give his two cents, but he wasn't really involved in. <laughs> he can always give his two cents to me. <laughs> I know, love brilliant. Matt. He could read the phone book. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. that I accent. love Matt. Yep. I know. I want to, like, program uh, him, like, on my GPS as yeah. opposed <laughs> to, like, the true. crazy the voice of, like, the woman or whatever. Like, English accent. Yeah. Yeah, just Amazing. take me everywhere. <laughs> and he's so pocket-sized. Like, he's just this, <laughs> this cute little, like, British guy wrapped up. How like, pocket in your pocket. Well, I'm an Amazon, so right. <laughs> everyone is pocket-sized to me. But he's probably, I would say, maybe, and I'm going to totally get it if I'm wrong, but maybe 5'8". 
Oh, no. Which is oh. right. Maybe even 5'7", I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he'll right. listen. I'm not <laughs> surprised. But I mean, I'm 5'11", and then I'm wearing four inch heels, so I'm like a Towering Lakers. Towering over yeah. him. Well, Lakers I always mom. thought that, um, what's his name from Tough Love? Steve, it's like Steve oh. something. Mm -hmm. I always thought that he was pocket sized, because he kind of has like that Jersey boy whatever, yeah. and then I met him in person, he's like 6'4". Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Cameras. Huh. Camera angles. Mm -hmm. I know, and who you're standing next to. Well, the broad to, shoulders, you can never tell if it's yeah, like compact or if it's like, oh. <laughs> but, but I love how Matt is very um, tailored. Like he very. always is, like wears like fitted yeah. suits mm -hmm. and he's just very eloquent. He's always got it together. Mm -hmm. Totally. <laughs> and I like that witty, quick oh, yeah. mind. Like quick. Sexy. The butterfly yeah. comment was one of my favorites. <gasps> Blew me away. We have to talk about that. Blew me away. Go for it. With the, how he mentioned that like with a butterfly, if you, if it lands in your hand and you close your fingers really quickly, it'll fly away, it'll be scared, mm -hmm. it'll be like, feel like it's suffocating. But if you go really slowly, it'll see the value in your hand and, and try to stay. just shelter it yeah. from the wind. Yeah. That's a good, I was like, I was like, where's a pin? There was that someone in the back so good. quotes like that. Yeah. If you listen really closely, there's someone in the audience that goes, brilliant! <laughs> oh, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> it's good, I thought that was so good. They're doing the same thing, they're like, I gotta write that down. Yeah. I'm like, I gotta write this. I wanted to tweet it, but I think I didn't think I could be able to sell it like yeah. I came up with yeah. myself. Too long for 140 yeah. characters. Yeah. yeah. Characters. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tim had Haley. She was the first girl to meet um, his parents, and Amber wanted her to find out um, about his parents' love story. So to kind of not make it about her, because we see how that's worked out for her in the past. She gets very nervous, and she kind of just spits out all of her words. So if she put the focus on them, I think that that was the point to kind of help not only learn something about them, but keep the focus off of her while, while still being involved in the conversation. Um, and the mom said that she felt very at ease, which I think is kind of the level of comfort that we've gotten from Haley this far, mm -hmm. even though it's, it's crossed the line once or twice, just of how comfortable she is, but at least she's being herself, and that's what everyone's getting from it. Did you have any interaction with Haley? Yeah, I really liked Haley a lot. Um, she reminded me a lot of Cameron Diaz. Um, really? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. She just had Spunky this, personality. and she would willingly like just throw herself under the bus. She was very like self-deprecating, and that's, um, I think, in a world where everyone's trying to make themselves like bigger and, and more impressive, mm -hmm. it's just it's nice to see something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's totally like I know she got totally creamed in the past for talking about farting, right? And it's like, but that's her personality, yeah. And she shouldn't. If your personality isn't like stuck in this box of being very ladylike, then. Don't be someone that you're not. Yeah. Um, and like her hand, man hands, like I have man hands too. So I was like, bring it home, Haley. Um, and the fact that she's like getting in trouble for talking like that. Um, and, and the way that I'm watching it though on TV, Grand, I wasn't on their dates, so maybe she was like kind of awkward on the dates. But in the house, like she didn't have any of that. Um, she was just very sweet and always had something nice to say about everybody. She was a really good girl. That's awesome. I'm liking her. Like, she's really evolving into, like, a woman to me. When she first came on, she had really masculine energy. I think it was mm -hmm. just the nervousness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now she's softening with this date with his parents. I was like, oh, my gosh, she's a really beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. The dress that she wore out in the audience, I can't remember if it was blue or green. or I just remember saying, wow, she looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. I still don't know if I see the chemistry between she and Tim, but she's really a beautiful woman. Yeah. One thing that people didn't know, she's an incredible artist. She is really? so incredibly talented, and because um, I think she teaches like an art. She's an, an art. elementary art teacher, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But she does these beautiful abstract uh, paintings that. Oh, wow. Huh. Um, yeah, she'll occasionally like tweet pictures of them or put them on Facebook. Or oh, wow. um, she's incredibly. Which talented. you'd never guess because they had that date where they painted something and it was very just. <laughs> yes, stick figure. Yeah. <laughs> First grade coloring book. That's true. But that's that's just I think another reason why we want these background stories of these yes. girls mm -hmm. so that we really see like more of their. They're not just like I'm pretty and I'm on a dating show. So you really mm -hmm. get to to find out who they are and what their story is and what they lived through and what their talents are and why they're on the show. Yeah, and then the viewers can start rooting for people. I right. think that they've had a very hard time connecting with the girls because they don't even know who they want Ben or Tim or Nesta mm -hmm. to end up with because they don't know that much about them. Now that it, everyone's kind of, you know, they're weeding out people, they're getting a little bit more of a connection just because they have more time for two hours in an mm -hmm. episode, but I think that that's just what everyone kind of was hoping for is just to be able, you know, I want to know who Shandy is so that I could be rooting for her at mm -hmm. the end of the yeah. day, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to just seeing the little basics that we're seeing. Um, Sarah, she won over, won over the family. Dad loved her. Mom loved her. She um, 
she wants she talked about the importance of marriage and that's what we've really seen from her this far she's a very serious commitment you're not mm -hmm. just picking Sarah to be like okay this is great let's go on a couple of dates like if you're picking her mm -hmm. you're you're in it for the long haul and I think that the family saw that as well um see him she the sister-in-law yeah the sister saw the chemistry between them and she came bearing gifts for everyone. So smart. Right, Lee? Yeah, so smart on her end. I um, love how they presented it. Oh, like, I know, I love the geography book. When did I tell you that my mom liked books? Yes. <laughs> so I gotta tell you, that was one of my favorite parts watching because before the date, she was like, Shandy, I have this. Now, granted, I'm a horrible with accent. <laughs> she, uh, she, her bed was next to mine. She was like, I have this idea. And she's like, I found this book in the other room. And she's like, look, look, look at the book. And I was like, oh, a book? Okay. And I, opened it up. I was like, oh, like it's the storage. She's like, Yes, I put gifts inside, and oh. I, she had this whole idea, and she was so excited about it. And it was almost um, like for someone, usually people are excited to receive gifts, mm -hmm. to see her excitement for giving Give these me. gifts, oh, nice. and all the gifts, which I wish it would have showed more about, but all those gifts she actually bought in Hawaii when we were there on oh, our gosh. date. When we were there on our date, she like spent a whole day of like, I'm gonna go out and find gifts for each of the, the she's like, at night, the dad has a bar supposedly in the basement, so I got him this like wine opener that has like a hula girl on the end of it, or Aww. not wine opener, uh, beer opener. And um, so she was really, really thoughtful about it, and so watching it play out, I was like, cause she said that she was gonna give it to her and be like, oh, please read the first page. <laughs> so watching <laughs> yeah. it, I was like, that is exactly how she told me she wanted to do it. So it was really cute, like having watched it all. I oh, like her confidence you. to buy those presents in Hawaii. She's like, I'm going to meet those parents. I'm yeah. going to be prepared. <laughs> And that says so much about a person when how you pointed out that she was that excited to give a gift as opposed to receiving it. I think that that just says so much about someone's giving character because they know how excited the person is that's going to receive it is going to get and that's enough for them. They're not getting anything right. but they're getting so much back from that. Yeah. So that's awesome. Do you think she suffered from a language barrier? Was that difficult for her? You know, um, I don't think so because she was really good at understanding English. Mm -hmm. um, speaking it, she'd occasionally like be a little broken with her English, but that made her, I thought, so cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the episode yeah. with the kite, and she's like, oh, look at oh. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to go through that screen and hug her. It was right. the cutest, most, uh, I don't know. Um, but her accent, I think, was just really, uh, adorable and like her when she'd flub up on words I think it just made her that much cuter yeah they remind me of love actually oh. when you have the the situation with yes. the like they didn't speak any of the other language loved and, it and then the papers are in the lake and she's swimming out she's like this better be worth something and yeah <laughs> I just watched that movie last week I love <laughs> and then we had Jenna who Unfortunately, given editing purposes, um, we have seen her had such great chemistry up with, uh, with Tim up to this point, but they made her interaction with the family seem so awkward, especially up until the first commercial break of, of that mm -hmm. date. She, you know, is like, oh, I'm getting to meet the old man, and her, or Tim's dad's like, well, I'm, I'm not that old. <laughs> Just so uncomfortable. And then she goes on to talking about how she's obsessed with Halloween, and she'll plan for Halloween the entire year. She'll have multiple costumes. <laughs> Me too. And how she just loves to celebrate all these different holidays and September 19th. That's when it's like, yeah. weird. Mark your calendar. September but I 19th. have to say, like, yeah. how many people at home are like, note to self, September 19th. Right. Like, <laughs> I'm going to tweet yeah. about it. I'm going to, like. That is definitely true. I'm like, she I brought it down. She brought a whole light on <laughs> September 19th for people. Totally. So, um, but it was unfortunately a little uncomfortable. Um, just kind of watching their interaction, but the mom did say that she saw her confidence, especially mm -hmm. because she is so young and the sister is a little worrisome because Tim always said, you know, I would never date someone your age because it's his little sister and Jenna's even younger, younger. than his, <laughs> his little sister. So that has to be a little weird, especially Completely because... Weird. Yeah, especially because of the type of relationship that he's looking for. He's already been married, mm -hmm. so he's not looking for that fun, casual, just whatever, we'll go catch a movie on Friday's kind of relationship. You know what's fascinating is um, she is young, mm -hmm. but she gave me some of the best advice in the house. Really? really? Yes. I'm like, do and, tell. And every time it would happen, I would, you know, be going through whatever, and then she'd be like, oh, what if you look at it this way? And I would be like, where does this stuff come from? Like, she would have these insightful, deep moments where she was like this love guru. Uh, which was so shocking because for someone younger who maybe hasn't had as many relationships or long-term relationships, yeah. for her to have this advice was really impressive. 
I think that that's kind of awesome when someone just the maturity that they have, you know, if it was from their upbringing or just kind of their surroundings and stuff, they carry that wisdom with them. And it's not even necessarily from their own life experiences, but just the experiences that people are having around them, mm -hmm. that they can take so much away from that. And like you're saying, give some of the best advice, even though they have, they aren't speaking from it from first person, but they know their best friend that went through something right. just like that. And they were kind of their, their mentor and their guidance. Mm -hmm. And so they know exactly like the do's and the don'ts even though it didn't come from them directly it's so amazing that you said that because now I see Sarah completely different I mean Jenna Jenna completely different because mm -hmm. everyone always emphasizes how young she is and then a lot of times when when they're doing the confessionals on stage she's very quiet and people interpret it as being standoffish mm -hmm. yeah but now you're saying that she's just insightful and more mature than yeah. people give her knowledge well, she didn't talk about her her relationship much and what she was right. developing and so she was a little bit more um, uh, reserved in right. that manner, but uh, an interesting Jenna fact: she makes an incredible queso dip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> she would go to town with uh, what is that fake brick of Velveeta. cheese, Velveeta, and queso. <laughs> and she was like our little chef in the house. She did that. She did bacon covered, or I'm sorry, no, uh, chocolate covered bacon. Yum! Wow. Um, which I hadn't even seen before, and I'm like, this, I, this is just sinful. Like, I am just getting <laughs> so away. I cannot participate in this. But the queso dip, she would go to town on that and make this huge vat. And, um, Interesting. Yeah, Yum. and we would have queso on everything until the next batch. Let's tweet these recipes there, um, honey. No, oh, can't go wrong with good queso dip. Yeah. Um, well, unfortunately, she got put into the bottom two for the reasons that we listed, but thankfully, um, CM also went down to the bottom two to the garden, and CM was sent home um, off of lack of of connection and future. I think CM was very shocked too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, she, her expression showed it for sure. And and just talking with her, I know that she was really developing strong feelings for him, um, and she felt that they were being reciprocated. So, but her look on her face was just sort of like very shocked what? Yeah. And, and, she, and there's tension between the two of them. totally yeah about the exact thing about mm -hmm. expressing feelings and not expressing feelings I mean they had that big exchange I guess Last maybe a week, week or yeah. so so this was interesting and so I think she even mentioned I bet Jenna's like having oh that was I'm sorry it was Renee who said I bet you know she's just loving the fact that I just got kicked off but mm -hmm. I do CM seemed really shocked that she was leaving because she was like I'm falling for this man. When she was saying, and she just spent all that money on those gifts. Well, that's true, too. She's like, I love this man. I want this man to be happy. I want to be with him. It was like she was really in it to win it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she didn't see anyone else taking taking the spot. Nope. You can tell when she came up like from the very first episode. She was like, I'm here for the man. I'm going to get Tim. That was it. Um, an interesting backstory on her. Um, she's very close with her family and her sister uh, passed away mm -hmm. and she was like five minutes late to getting to the hospital before her sister passed away and so uh -huh. um, she had uh, like pictures of her sister around her bed and um, so she just has this I think um, I don't want to say uh, a void in her life but she you can tell that she has this like she wants to fill it with a family I think right. and, mm -hmm. and with love so Mm -hmm. But she can normally, when people have something like that, they bring a lot to the table just because right. they're so willing to give so much, like Matt, they think, pointed out. But if you do that, I think that's when the whole butterfly suffocating mm -hmm. kind of conversation came up because you mm -hmm. can't, there's got to be a happy balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's she was so saying she wanted to be able to say everything. Right, she was right there. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's move on to Ernesto, but before we do, if you guys are watching us on AfterBuzzTV.com, make sure to go over to iTunes, check out our show there, rate, comment, get us stars, to five please. stars. Five. Yeah, you guys have been <laughs> awesome. Let us know uh, what you think, how we're doing. We also have a ton of after shows on um, After Buzz TV as well. I think we're doing like 60 a week or something like that. So everything that you're interested in there is Millions on of it. downloads a day. Yeah, awesome. it's awesome. Yeah. So let us know what you think. And then we also want to remind you that Serial Buddies, the film by our founders, Marie Menounos and Kevin Undergaro, yes. is now out on DVD. So make sure... May 29th. May 29th. Right okay, so corner. not now, but almost. It'll be available for digital download from iTunes and SerialBuddies.com May 29th. There you yes. mark the calendar. We're just mentally preparing you <laughs> ahead of time. Mark your She's calendar. Like, where did that voice come from? I don't know. <laughs>
I mean, he, he chimes in from time to time. Sometimes when we want him to, sometimes when we don't. But. You gotta ask me. <laughs> um, Steven in the booth, everybody. But yes. <laughs> please, like, please, please support our family and their efforts of this film. It's hilarious. It's you know, it's sarcastic. Maria is in it, as well as Kathy Lee Gifford, Christopher Lloyd, Beth Bears, Christopher McDonald, um, and also the voice of Henry Winkler. Kind of yeah. random, but fitting. <laughs> and um, just, you know, we love, we love when you guys tune in, when you comment, when you rate, um, but, you know, also supporting something like this. You help to keep the lights on. You help us to keep bringing you programming for free mm -hmm. every single day, all day, because that's who we are. Yeah, it means a lot. So do it. <laughs> Check it out. Now on to Ernesto, who is left with Elba um, and Shandy, who are both on Amber's team. And Matt was left with Mandy and Kristen. Uh, Tracy does not have any ladies remaining. She hasn't had him actually for a couple weeks, I think, from Ernesto. So maybe yeah. she didn't really have a good idea of what Ernesto yeah. was looking for <laughs> yeah. from the start. But Mandy was uh, the first girl to meet the family. And Matt's advice was to talk about them. And unfortunately, she did the complete opposite. She got a little uh, chatty Cathy nervous and, and kind of just kept talking about herself. And um, unfortunately, what she thought was kind of explained a lot about herself with her past relationship. Her boyfriend in high school passed away. And she said that she never really felt love like that, which gave her a good idea of what exactly she's looking for. Matt said that, you know, that wasn't necessarily something that should have been brought up at that moment because um, you're talking about another man and yourself <laughs> when I wanted you to talk about the family and Ernesto, who right. you're there for. Mm -hmm. So I get where he was coming from, but um, unfortunately I think that she just she just got, her nerves got the best of her. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, well first of all, just in meeting his family, how much Warmth and sweetness that his mother oozed. Oh, yes. Like she just, um, she just has this like just genuine, soft, sweet, like a, what what you would imagine like a perfect mother would have True. of just wanting to love and nurture and yeah, and you just see it in her eyes. Uh, but I think that Mandy, that's like how anyone is. When we get nervous, sometimes our mouth is just can't it's stop. Like, yeah, it's going diary of the mouth stuff just comes <laughs> out. And, and I know that she was really nervous because she wanted to make a good impression. Um, so, but what I thought was funny, which they didn't show, she came back and was so like, I cannot believe I talked about this. Supposedly, she was telling the mom and sister, like, while you're in town, you gotta go check out the wax museum. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, I've never even of been to the things. wax museum. <laughs> and she was like, you can see like Marilyn Monroe, you can see. <laughs> and so she was like totally pumping up the, the wax museum and then was like, I can't believe that I talked to them about that when she got back, which was cute. My mom loves the wax museum. <laughs> She's been? I've really? never been. I've never been either. I've been out here for almost five years and it's just not, when I think LA, that's not my oh. go-to spot. So I, I really wanted to have like a tourist day someday where I check that out and Ripley's uh, Believe It or Not. Yeah. <laughs> just hit everything down Hollywood <laughs> but Boulevard. But I don't know if it's worth it, but your mom really loves, my so mom, she's been more than once? She's been to the one here and also New York. Oh, but just once? Just once. Okay. Well, she probably she will go back once again. She has. <laughs> it's like 35 bucks or so, but she had the best time ever. Like, Do they look like what? themselves? My mom sits down with the people. She, t Yeah, it's crazy. She has the best time of her life. That That's so wow. funny. So Ernie's family should check out the wax museum. I'm just going <laughs> to... just going <laughs> to... I'm going to check out the wax museum. <laughs> We're all Jump convinced. Jump on that endorsement. I'm Are just they still say. open? We'll go after this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> happens. Um, moving on to Elba, who we wanted to discuss with you, Shandy, because obviously there's been, I mean, just a little bit of drama this yeah. far. Not much at all. They haven't Pretty focused tiny. on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, the sister was actually a little standoffish with Elba from the start because she was like, why? I mean, she brought it up, right, at least from the first part of the date that we saw. She was like, why did you leave so close to the end? Because to her, that was saying, you know, if something means that much to you, you fight for it. You wouldn't just walk away because it's hard and the drama's consuming you or whatever, which is such a good, valid point, I think. Totally. But, um, I mean, we still don't really... I don't buy it. I don't know about you guys. And, Shandy, I know that you feel a certain mm -hmm. way about this, too. But... It's the same reason that his sister pointed out. It's, it doesn't really mean that much to you if this far into it you were going to walk away. Like, this is yeah. your life that you're ideally talking about. Well, the about. reason for walking away I thought was kind of unfortunate because she, I, unless I'm 
I misunderstood, but it sounded like she walked away because uh, it was hard to see him dating other girls. Mm -hmm. But it's like, but you're on a dating show. Like and you knew that you yeah. were going on a dating show. You knew what what some of the the restrictions were. Um, one thing that I do want to say, though, I know that Mandy uh, last week when um, Alba came back and Mandy was in the garden saying it's so unfair, it's so unfair. I, I heard that she got a lot of flack saying, um, well, it's unfair. You're saying they thought that she was saying it's unfair that she came back, and that well, I don't think really was what Mandy was referring to. It was just that um, up to that point for weeks. Um, leading up to that, Alba wasn't in the house with us. She was staying in a hotel because of the drama and she wanted to get away. And I think Mandy would just felt like that Mandy was putting out all the effort and she was, and, and all of us were, of um, the stress of being in the house with all the girls and yeah, all right. that mm -hmm. drama and whatnot. And that, and then you got a break by being in a hotel and then left and then came back. So I think that's what she was referring to. Um, but yeah, they have been really playing out like the drama between the two of us, which is unfortunate. Um, I don't know where the tension came from, to be totally honest. Mm -hmm. um, we were actually the closest in the house in the very beginning. Um, the very day that we all uh, meet each other, all the other girls, the very first stage show when we all come up and give our introductions. Um, I, I thought she looked familiar, but I couldn't quite place it because <laughs> at Miss Universe, there's 82 girls that were competing. Oh, wow. And so you really, um, especially like the, the Latin girls would all hang out together because they could speak the same language. And mm -hmm. so I would hang out with, uh, well, Miss Trinidad and Tobago was actually my best friend at the pageant. Um, and then I'd hang out with like, Miss Netherlands and Australia. And um, so I never really got to talk to her, but I remember seeing her. And of course, we both made the top five, so I, I knew her through that. Um, and so I saw her and I was like, are you by any chance from Puerto Rico? And she was like, Shandy. And I was like, oh, you know me. Like, and I was like, it is you. And so it was just crazy that here we both were in this situation together. So we became friends. And then something happened where it just, it, it, we weren't anymore. And, um, and I don't know why, but um, I don't know. You just had to almost keep reminding yourself every day of why you're there. And you're there yeah. for the guy. You're not there to make best friends or bridesmaids. Um, you don't want to create enemies, but right. you're there, you put yourself there to find love. And so right. you just had to keep reminding yourself that. that that's Tiffy Tweets there. wants to know if you think it was fair that she came back. It didn't bother me. Um, and it didn't bother me because I knew the connection that I was establishing. Um, I felt like it was a little dramatic um, in the way that it happened of like, dun, dun, dun. And I actually said, because we were all sitting on the stage and there was an empty chair next to me. And I was like, Girls, there's an empty chair next to me, and they were like, "Well, yeah, because Elba's not here." I'm like, "No, like they should take the chair away. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, she, there's something. Here. Like, I, I work in this business. Yeah. Like, there, there's something." Mm -hmm. But I didn't know. Last thing I ever thought was that she was coming back. But then they said, "Okay, girls, now go back into your dollhouse boxes, which were like claustrophobic coffins." But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> fancy um, coffins of that. But um, and I was like, "This is weird," because usually when we're done, we go up to the score scoreboard. So we're standing in there, and then you hear something, and it was her elevator coming up. Um, but we didn't know at the time. And then when we see her walk out, so um, I and wasn't. And already closed you guys in at that yeah. point. Like, yeah, you guys went in. Because we see you guys trying to, like, you know, peek around. Mandy's like, what's going on? Yeah. And you guys so are just in there. It was, it, the hardest part was, so, so her, her coming back, um, it wasn't like, oh, you shouldn't be here, uh, because I knew the, I always think, like, even in a pageant, like, you shouldn't be like, well, Miss So-and-so, like, she looks better than me or she has a better dress. It's about you. Like, you got to right. keep your focus on yourself, just even in life. Mm -hmm. uh, for girls that go on auditions and, like, not like, oh, well, she's prettier than me. Worry about yourself. Uh, if you worry about everyone else in the world, um, you're never going to get anywhere. So I knew the, the relationship that I was developing, so that didn't matter so much. What hurt was being in my little glass coffin and seeing them hold hands and seeing the, the connection because we had such limited contact with him. We only got to see him once a week for a date. Um, and the rest of the week, we were stuck in the house with all these girls. And so mm -hmm. the fact that she got extra time with him, the fact of knowing that he was in her hotel room for a while, the fact that now they're on stage and we're witnessing like him hold her hand and like and be there for her, that was really hard because um, even though we know they're all going on dates, we don't eavesdrop in and watch them kiss or anything like that. So you create in your head, like, I'm the only one. Like, I'm the mm -hmm. only one that yeah. feels anything, and he feels for me. And so to watch that, that really, really hurt. And then when he walked up to us, it was very hard to... 
be like, oh, it's okay, because it was like, I just watched this interaction. Yeah, you never want that to be kind of shoved in front of your face. Like you said, you think about yourself, which great advice I need to point out. Yeah. Yeah. To just always, it's about you, it's not about yeah. other people. And you know, Mar most of that, I think, uh, women in general, we, we just never feel like we're good enough. We're never mm -hmm. young enough, or thin enough, or pretty enough, or smart enough. And we feel that way because we're looking outside of ourselves. Uh, well, she's younger, she's prettier, she's thinner. And there's always going to be someone that's more than you. Right. And so you got to just start focusing on yourself of, I am this, I, you know, and, and just keep it more internal. I think you're just going to be happier in life. Yeah. Amen, <laughs> that's yeah, sister. Yeah. Stephen, can we get an applause for that? Because today. Because oh, that okay. was good stuff. <laughs> I read a lot of self-help. So. <laughs> that is that but, was So then after we go downstairs and everyone's like, we need to talk about this. We were all upset at the, the manner in which it was dealt with. It's like, if you wanted to come back, then, you know, I don't know, just maybe not. And I know it's not, it wasn't probably her decision. I'm sure a lot of the producers are like, let's make course, it dramatic. It. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I was talking with her and we went outside and talked and they only showed like just a little tidbit where I'm like, so tomorrow you meet the parents. Like, and so I was like, you know, hey, buddy, buddy. We still uh, at that point weren't like buddy, buddy, but I just wanted her to know we had a long talk about 30 to 45 minutes where I said, um, you know, this is hard because we're all developing these feelings for him. And um, if you are the one who ends up with him, uh, you know, I want to make sure you're the best one then. And if you're like here today, gone tomorrow, bunny bread kind of style. Um, bunny bread, what does that mean? You don't remember bunny bread? <laughs> is that a Midwest thing? <laughs> I'm from the Midwest. I'm yeah, it was uh, uh, here today, gone tomorrow. That's what I said, bunny bread. Oh no. You don't remember no. Bunny no. Oh, no. I'm, oh, my I'm from the South. I've never heard that before. I want someone to tweet you right now who knows about Bunny Bread. Bunny that Bread was Bunny Bread. Bread. <laughs> Do y'all look at me like, I was like, wait a minute, we gotta push pause I'm the sure story. there'll be people on YouTube tomorrow that are gonna come in too. Yeah. So. Bunny Bread, was, it was like, because they had like Wonder Bread, and then they had like the like the store brand right, bread, but yeah. Bunny Bread was like extra fluffy. Um, probably <laughs> here today, going tomorrow, yeah. bunny bread. Now I get it. And then it was like, that's what I said, bunny bread. <laughs> no, it's not ringing any bells. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure, in I'm my gonna, world, I'm sure I'm going to hear it. In my world, we ate bunny bread. It was cheaper, so we were we were on a budget in my family. We have some international <laughs> listeners, too, so I think the explanation was worth it. For me, yeah, too. That's know. great. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so um, <laughs> that was my point is like, uh, if, if you are the one who ends up with him, because we're all caring for him, we all want the best person, and those qualities don't necessarily exemplify um, someone who I, I think would have made a great wife. But I understand like her reasoning and all of that, but yeah. Which is great to point out because at the end of the day, I mean, Allie said the same thing when she was kind of volunteering herself for Ben's segment. You're to the point now where you genuinely, hopefully at least, you are caring for that person. So it's not, if you're not the right person, I think everyone's just kind of at the point, then fine, let me go because I want the best for you. I want mm -hmm. the best for yeah. me and I'm not going to change myself yes. into what I think that you need. So if it, it is what it is almost at this point, you know, yes. and you're just kind of trying to build your own relationships and move forward or kind of, you know, call it quits and, and make your ways, but. I think it's partially like, if you're not feeling it for me, let me go. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also, let me go, not only because I don't want to like put this effort and this uh, emotion out there for you if, if you're not feeling it back, but also let me get back to my own life. Yep. Yeah, I because it. I don't think people understand being on a reality show, you literally hit pause on your life. Um, you are living in a home with no TV, no radio, no internet, no phones, um, nothing but two buck chuck. And what? Charles Shaw. But Chuck thankfully, Chuck. thankfully, we know this one. <laughs> two dollar one. I need to go back to the grocery worry. store. And <laughs> we know two buck Chuck. Well, at least so, I do. I'm speaking yeah. for myself. <laughs> so, um, you know, you want to get back to your own life, and because mm -hmm. it's it's literally taking a huge toll on your life of, um, you know, being away from your friends and your family and your job and. Um, and my dog, my dog was able to be on for the first month, I would say, of the show. Um, but then my parents uh, took him back to Missouri um, mm -hmm. to live. And the, he only was with us, my dog, which you never even got to really see. You saw him running around oh, the background a little bit. No, I don't remember. <laughs> if, if the first few episodes, you'll see this little white thing go by. Oh. Um, <laughs> but, um, and, and he was out just because my parents uh, weren't able to watch him because they were dealing with a medical issue with my grandmother. Um, but so to get back to your 
your life. Like, if he's not feeling it, like, let me please go yeah. back to my yeah. life then. Don't because... keep me here and just drag me along. Yeah, there's no reason. No well, work, no Facebook, no Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> what was the, the essential? The right. reason, obviously, because Ready for Love was not the kind of reality show. It wasn't a Bachelor kind of experience because it didn't have the, the reputation of something that's already been on for 16 seasons mm -hmm. or whatever they're on now. So what was it that actually made you because we know that they they mm. tried a lot of press and it was all through Facebook and stuff you know to try to get girls to sign up off of the guys and stuff so what was your reasoning for doing for doing the show you know it was actually um, it's kind of a long story but I'll simplify it um, I had gotten out of a relationship um, a few months before one that I, I thought was really going to progress into something and then a few things like blindsided me and um, so, dating in LA, I think, is the hardest city to yep. date in. Yes. I've lived yes. in uh, South Beach, Miami. I've lived in New Amen York. To that. And then I've lived here. And then, of course, Missouri, where I'm from. LA is the hardest place. And it's mostly because, like, you see a guy with, like, a flashy car, and, and, all, and then he's, like, living in a dump and so. Uh, <laughs> And so in debt uh, and just yeah. putting up this front, everyone is about this front of, I am somebody amazing, don't you want to get to know me? Yeah. And it's like, no, like everything that you're qualifying yourself as amazing is everything like that no. fades. Yeah. And yeah, right. none of that stuff you can take with you. Um, so um, I was one night, uh, I had gotten home from work and I was on my couch and I was watching TV and I, I never used to, now I do a little bit more, but I never used to go on the wall of Facebook because I um, maxed out at friends. Um, because I was like, who am I to judge? Like, I accept, accept, accept. Right. Um, and so a lot of them were just like fans from shows and things like that. So to go on the wall, I wouldn't recognize anyone, but I found myself on the wall and I'm flipping through and I see this girl who I had br briefly known um, in my life and she posted something that said, maybe there's love for me after all. And it was this link to this show that they were starting to cast for called The One. This is before they changed the name to Ready for Love. And I started reading it, and um, it said, you know, this is a real-life um, dating show. We're really finding you the one that you're looking for, and we're going to help with these three amazing matchmakers. And something about it drew me in. And and then I'm thinking, like, really? Like, am I going to go on, like, a dating show? Like, <laughs> I'd rather go on Survivor and eat bugs. Um, <laughs> so, uh, or even Fear Factor, for that matter. And so um, I sent my agent an email, and I was like, do you know anything about the one? Um, just saw something about whatever. So the next day I'm at work and she emails me back and she's like, oh yeah, like, um, you know, we'll talk to them about you being a host for it or sort of getting an interview to, to talk about hosting it. And I wrote back and I was like, Ugh. <laughs> actually I, I want to maybe go on it like in, as, a, as a contestant. And so she didn't write back. She probably was like, this girl is on drugs now. Like, what is happening? <laughs> so I got home that night and I'm pacing and I'm like, it's just going through my head and I'm like, something about it I want to go on and so um, I pour myself a glass of wine and I have the wine I'm like sitting there looking at my computer and I'm like ah. so I was like screw it I'm doing it so I fill out the, the application and I literally just like I'm like send and then I sit back I'm like Whoa. Well, is this before or after you saw Ernesto's video? I had to you know. They didn't even yeah. have the guys picked out yet. Oh my gosh, are you yeah. serious? You blindly just wanted to do because this. it didn't say that I was one of like even. For all I knew, they were picking like one guy, one girl, like you two date, right. you okay. two date. I like I had no idea how it was gonna run. It just felt right to you. Something, Something about, about it. it. And I told, I've always gone through my life, or at least I try to trust my gut. Mm -hmm. um, I trust in my gut in everything for going after Miss USA. I've trusted my gut in the decision to move out here. I've trusted my gut, even in the type of dog I got. Like, I'm just like way consulting the gut yeah. <laughs> on everything. And I think I, I think it's important for people to do that. But anyway, um, so then they start calling me and and wanting me to come in. And then I'm like, my agent was saying, um, you know, I, I can't support you in this. Um, I had been, I was incredibly blessed to have gone on Dancing with the Stars season four and been a contestant. And she was like, that's the only reality show you can ever do. You can't do. And she's like, and you're one of many. And so she was really encouraging me of, why don't you like wait? And maybe next season if they do it, you can be like the featured girl and have all these guys and that way you can get more. And I was like, well, I know like if I was doing it for reasons of exposure, of TV exposure, great. Right. But I was like, I, I really think I'm going to find and I knew finding love would have been like finding a needle in a haystack kind of thing, but I felt like there was some reason to go through with it. And I truly live by the stance of to live life with um, a lot of oh wells as opposed to what ifs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't want to be this old lady on a rocker chair going, I wish, I wish, I wish yeah. I would have done all these yeah, things. What or if? What if? Yeah. For me. So it's better to go, oh well. And as long as I wasn't, um, you know, getting wasted in a hot tub and 
stuff like that, they they still can edit some things around, but you can't. They can't take something that's not there at all. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, as long as I just remain true to who I am and um, and go in it with the honest effort of I'm really looking for love, and I, and you know whatever happens happens. But if nothing else, I will say this: it was an incredible learning experience. <laughs> um, just putting yeah. yourself in those yeah. types of pressures and and being around so many other different personalities and. It was um, definitely a, an experience I will 100% remember the rest of my life. Well, I have to say, regardless of the way that the editors kind of are producing this and what they're cutting from it, I think that you've stayed really true to yourself from at least mm -hmm. what we've seen and, and staying super classy and who cool as a cucumber. We keep saying that. Oh, yeah. Cool, cool as a cucumber. As a cucumber. <laughs> Game face was on you from got it. first episode. I have to commend you, oh. hands down. Yeah, you've got yeah, it so you. together mm -hmm. where you were, like, taking down pointers, <laughs> trying to yeah. take out. Yeah. A lot, like, underneath your skin, you're like, and you want to just, like, sometimes strangle someone. Yeah. But at the end, end of the day, I um, have really lived an amazing life. Like, I have been all over the world and that just had amazing opportunities, and I really know who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I really feel confident in my morals, my values, what I stand for, and just who I've developed. And, yeah, I've made a lot of bad choices in my life, and I've gone through learning experiences and had my heart broken and gone through a lot of learning things that have gotten to me to where I am. But at this point, it was like... No one's gonna rattle my cage now. Um, so yeah. if these girls are gonna like get into a fight because God knows what, because we were fighting all the time, um, <laughs> and I think our house was the craziest by far. Um, but it was like none of this is going to defer me or change me or make me be someone that I'm not. So I just try to stay true in that manner. Yeah. And I did make some great friends out of it. That's um, great. Kristen, as a matter of fact, uh, who we didn't get to see hardly anything on our show. Yeah, yeah. but so she, far. she made it out of the bottom two. Her and Mandy were yeah. in the bottom two, and Mandy yeah. did go home. So we'll get to see more, hopefully. Well, and her week. and I became really good friends, but she, which America doesn't know, is hilarious. She was the comedian of the house, like would wow. constantly have us in stitches. And, uh, and then the only time they show her, she's like, can put yeah. Can't put in it. Yeah. yeah, oh la la. Yeah. Like, it was like, what did you say? Uh, yeah. And what did she end up saying? She, I, she likes to go dancing. Yeah, something. I like yeah. to go dancing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was like, that's Great all we got? Too. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she was so much better than that. Um, so the editing, unfortunately, hasn't given her, like, I think, enough time. But... Um, mm -hmm. So I made great friends out of it too, and, and just the whole experience was amazing. I'm what really did you, from this entire thing? What did you learn that you'll take into your next relationship and into your love life? Well, how um, she might be with yeah, that stuff. I think you know. I believe with that. I believe um, what it didn't show on my very first date with him. I uh, recall the story that I had learned um, in tenth grade. I had a teacher, a history teacher. His name was Mr. Stevens. And I have no idea why he told us this story, but he said, um, when looking for your partner in life, he said, go out and look with both eyes open. And he already had kind of like bugged out eyes, and so he like <laughs> looked around the room. And then he said, and when you find that person, he smacked himself in the face, and he said, close one eye. And so it meant, like, be very specific of what you want. Like, have your list down and be as picky as you want, because mm -hmm. that's when you can be picky. And then when you find the person... Then close one eye. Don't be as picky. So as soon as, like, yes, they meet these, like, ten things that I really am looking for and that I value in a guy, then don't be like, oh, I left the toilet seat down. Like, let me fight over that. Or, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, like, why is he wearing that stupid shirt? And so then don't be so picky. And I think so much in my life I had done it the other way. Of course. Where it was like, oh, he's cute, and, and the, it'll do. And then I'd be in a relationship. And then when it gets to the hard-hitting topics of how do you want to raise a family and, um, you know, how do you want to raise your children and, and what type of education do you want them to have and what's your faith like and right. all of mm -hmm. these important things, um, then you're like, oh, like, we don't have a lot in common. So I think uh, I went into it with that. So the first date, we were really, like, hitting a lot of yeah, heavy topics. Yeah, you had the yeah. questions. You did. You were like, yeah. bam, bam, you bam. Know, and it was because as much as, like, I was there for him, I needed to make sure that he had the same qualities because if he didn't, then I would have let myself go. Um, cause I had a life to live and I had to get back to my, <laughs> back to my life. And so, um, I think what I took from that is just to continue with that mindset, whether it, it means that I did am with him or am not or whatnot, um, to just, uh, you know, look with both eyes open. I like that. Again, yeah, I always awesome. need a pin. Come so on. I can write this stuff. Well, no, this well, is we can good. Watch tomorrow yeah, on YouTube. we're going we're back. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. I wish that we could keep picking your brain. It's been so great having you in studio. Thank you so much for My joining us. My pleasure. Um, I'm glad you guys like the show. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. it's a hit, and the fans love it. Yeah, so do. NBC, get it together and, and bring it back <laughs> on TV. I will say this, that next week it might be a little bit of a shocker. <gasps> dun dun dun! No, Ooh, leave me on should we should we hit predictions really quickly? Wow! Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah. <laughs> me? No. Yeah. My lips are sealed. Like I have said enough. <laughs> What? Interesting. Well, next week we get to see the guys meet all of the girls' families. This will be good. So I don't even, I really don't even know what to predict, but now I'm like anxious. Well, I hope, I'm so excited to see how they, they do my family because um, without saying what my family does, my dad uh, is 100% meet the parents, Robert De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he is retired now, but he was Secret Service for the United States Treasury. And, oh, um, it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. So he, he put them to the test, and you'll see how. Oh, that's awesome. That. <laughs> Everyone, oh. make sure to tune in next week. <laughs> and awesome. actually, to add to that, the, the After Buzzers love our show. We were number nine last week, so thank you yeah. for downloading, for listening, yeah. for commenting. We appreciate that so much. We have millions of downloads a week, and so it's amazing. Yeah. We're so Thanks happy for that sticking you with in. us, yeah. even yeah. though we're, we're on NBC.com now as <laughs> yeah. opposed to yeah. the actual network. Or on demand. Or Hulu yeah. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> The opportunities are endless. <laughs> um, until next week, ladies, how can everyone get in touch with you? Oh, well, I'm Tara Johnson. You can catch me on Twitter or Instagram at TJ Path to Passion. Shandy, how about you? Um, Twitter. I'm a tweetaholic. Uh, it's just Shandy Fennessy. And you have a new website project happening. I do. Well, I have my own website, which is shandy.info, and then I have a new one that I just launched called pageantology.com. Oh, Ooh, nice. Check it out. It's fun. And you can find me on most social media platforms at Giselle Ugardi. And you guys can follow me on Twitter at Samantha underscore Leich, L-A-I-C-H. And you can follow all of us here at AfterBuzz TV on Twitter as well. Until next time, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next Sunday. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.